There is a brand new AI art generator, which may be the best option for print on demand sellers. Its style perfectly suits t-shirts and other POD products. Its text accuracy is even better than ideogram. On top of that, it's super easy to use. And best of all, currently you can access it for free and use the images for commercial purposes. So the AI tool I'm talking about is Flux One. It is by Black Forest Labs, completely new company in the space, it seems like I've heard that a lot of the people behind it used to work on stable diffusion. We've got this website right here, which will be linked in the description, which is kind of the starting point of this new uh, AI model. And the example images are great. However, they're not really uh, what we're looking for in terms of print on demand products. So I'm going to show you how to prompt uh, for POD in a little bit. The important part is down here, we've got a quick overview of the different tiers of Flux or the different versions that they have. So there's Pro, Dev, and Schnell. Schnell being the fast version, but also the one with the worst results. Dev is somewhere in the middle, and then Pro is their most advanced model. That's the one we're going to use in this video, by the way. Now, the thing is Black Forest Labs doesn't have their own website where you can generate these images like Midjourney or Ideogram does, at least not as of yet. But down here, you've got these little icons that are linking to third-party websites where you can use Flux, uh, where it is integrated into that external website. Um, I do think most of these currently are charging to use the Flux models on these sites that are linked right here. But the website that I'm going to show you in a minute, you can use it for free currently. So you definitely want to take advantage of it. I will still leave a link to this homepage of Black Forest Labs um, or for Flux One in the description so that you can check in future. If anything changes, you can always come back and see where can you currently use the different models. Because a lot of you are always asking about the commercial use for these tools, I thought I'd put it at the start of this video. Here we've got the Flux Terms of Service and right at the beginning, we've got the most important parts. So we claim no ownership rights in and to the outputs, and you may use the output for your own personal or commercial purposes. This is also important, so it says you may not direct the services to generate any output in violation of any applicable intellectual property right, contractual restriction, or other law, which means, yes, you can use the graphics they generate with these models for print and demand. However, you're not supposed to generate something that infringes on someone's IP, on someone's brand, or on someone's trademark, that is still not allowed. So the site where you can use the pro model of Flux for free, at least as of now, is Glyph Alpha. This is a site where you can build your own AI apps and workflows. You don't have to do that, you can do. Matt Wolf has got a tutorial about that, but I've already created a workflow that's perfect for generating AI images for POD. And I'm going to leave a link in the description to that workflow page, which looks like this. And then all you have to do is enter your prompt right here, click run this glyph, and then it will take a few seconds and generate your image. So I've just entered a quick sample prompt right here. This is supposed to create a vintage sunset graphic of a Highland cow that says, fun fact, I don't care. Um, then just click run this glyph. It does usually take about 20 seconds. You get an average right here of uh, the generation times. And by the way, you can generate up to 200 images in one day for free, which is crazy. There we go. I think that is a really, really good result. This is completely new, this model, and it already looks as good, if not better, than what Ideogram or Midgeny could do. I've also had some better results for that same prompt yesterday. So here, that looks pretty decent as well. Interesting font, as well as this graphic, really easy to remove the background and the text effect right here with this 3D shadow is pretty interesting. So here's the second prompt I'm going to try. It says vintage sunset vector t-shirt design of a dog with the text, live more, worry less isolated on a white background. And there we go. It was very quick. It is spelled correctly, uh, very easy to read. The graphic is great as well. Once you're happy with the result, you can click download up here. Or if you want to go to a previous result and download that, you just have to click on it, scroll down a bit, and you'll see the download button right here at the bottom. Now, if you want some prompts to test this new AI with, one thing that I did is I just went to Ideogram to either the Explore page or to graphics that I've liked in the past. I copied the prompts there, pasted them into this new website, and most of the time, I've actually been getting better results from this Flux tool than I have been with Ideogram. Alternatively, you can also come to my website to the freebies section, which is linked down below. I've also gone through a lot of the prompts in this 31 Ideogram prompt guide, 
Most of them get really good results. You can probably also test some of the Mid Journey and DALI 3 prompts. I don't know what they're going to look like, but they might be decent as well. Or alternatively, I've also got a 100 print on demand prompts guide. This one, I tested a lot of these prompts, got some super amazing results as well. This one isn't free, but for anyone watching this video, if you enter the code FLUX, you will get a custom discount. You don't have to get this, but it is an option if you want a lot of prompts to go through with good results. Now, one thing I noticed during sort of my first 100 images that I generated is that the text almost always is spelled correctly. You'll barely get any spelling mistakes as such. If anything is wrong with the text, it's usually that this tool misses out certain words or forgets half a sentence. Like in this case, it's supposed to say, I just really like owls, okay? It forgot about owls. Here it missed out the fun fact. But for the most part, it can do very long sentences very well. We've got, I wake up because of coffee, not because of work. The layout is great. Everything's spelled correctly, easy to read. And some of the actual sort of fonts and text effects that it uses. I know these are not actual fonts, but the style of text that it uses is sometimes really cool. Love this script font right here. Then for this prompt, it's got an amazing sort of texture overlay right here onto these letters. This image really impressed me. It's highly decorated, these words, and they're still perfectly spelled. Very easy to read as well, even though there's so many coffee beans on them. Also the layout and the text sizing is really, really good. And here's another good example of the tool taking the text and turning it into something that looks very, very striking and eye-catching. One thing that I have found as well is that it does struggle a bit with animals eating stuff or generally people eating, but the tool definitely seems to be really good when it comes to hands and paws also look very tidy compared to some of the other AI art generators. One thing I noticed as well is that some of the ideogram prompts that I found, they might have a very well isolated background on ideogram, but then right here with Flux, they don't. They've kind of got like a messy backdrop. And that is in most cases because there is nothing specified in the prompt to isolate it on a white background, for example. So if you get results like this, add that to the prompt and it should help you out. Now, if you want to use the images for print on demand, then you first of all need to increase the quality by either upscaling the graphics or vectorizing them. And you also have to remove the background. So let me give you a few quick tips right here. First of all, if you want to upscale your image, you can use dgb.lol, which from my tests gets some of the best results out there. It is totally free to use, but the downside is it's going to take you some time to upscale because you rarely find a tool that gets really high quality results that's totally free and that's also super fast unfortunately one of the best workflows that i found is dropping images into ai retouch you wait for them to be upscaled you can also drop multiple images one after another once they're upscaled they will appear in your my files section right here that is the queue and then you need to drop them into the ai image upscaler and use a 2x model to just double the size as well i've made a separate video on this workflow if you want to see it in more depth. Alternatively, you can also use Upscale, which you can download to your device. I believe it is still free on Windows, not on Apple from what I've heard. Or one of the paid upscalers that a lot of people praise is Topaz Gigapixel. When it comes to removing backgrounds, one free tool that you can try out is ClipDrop. This does have a limit in terms of the size that you can drop right here. So you would have to use your base images at around 1000 pixels. Um, you can't use an upscaled image, you would have to do that afterwards. In some cases, it gets great results like this giraffe right here because the background is very easy to remove from this graphic. If you've got a more complex graphic, then you might get some bad results where just half of the background is removed and you've got some sort of foggy, half transparent parts. In that case, let me show you another method. So here I've opened another image in the Photoshop beta. By the way, all of the tools I've mentioned in this video are linked below. And what I'm going to do now is I will head to select color range. I will click invert right here, then use the eyedropper to click on the background. And then I'll just play around with this slider, probably set this to around 110 right here. That looks good. Uh, the black is what's going to be knocked out. So we'll click OK. And then I'll use this symbol right here to create a mask from my selection. If you don't have this additional bar, you can click it down here in the layers panel as well. There we go. That did a pretty good job. Now we can add a different background color right here. And you can see what this looks like in terms of different t-shirt colors. If you wanted to use it on a dark blue, for example, this is your results. If you want to learn a great side hustle to start in 2024, then make sure to check out this video next where I teach you how to sell custom t-shirts on Etsy the easy way.